Welcome to Kinganda, your number one source of African news on the continent and throughout the diaspora. My name is O'Shea Duke Jackson and I'll be your host for today. And man, do we got a great show lined up for you. Gambia is telling Jami, you know, the ex-president, ex-dictator, but you can't come back. You know what I'm saying? Ethiopia, passing gun laws, and we got so much more today. So stick around and let's get into the African news. Controversial ex-dictator Yaya Jame, my man right here, has been out of the Gambia since 2016. Now stop the show. Why is that the case? Well, he lost the election in 2016 and just said, I ain't going nowhere. What? Until all the West African countries said, listen, bro, if you don't get up out of there, we coming to put you out. So he bounced all the way to Equatorial Guinea. Now here's the issue. Jame took the country in 1994 in a military coup and he wooed the Gambia with an iron fist, right? And he's made some really interesting headlines. My man said he could cure AIDS with a concoction. And he also talked about, you know, his ideologies on gays in the Gambia. Actually, let's play that clip. So you can kind of hear how he felt about that. Africans have never been homosexual. We have never seen homosexual frogs. I have cattle, I've never seen homosexual gay cattle. And homosexuality is, a, is detrimental to human existence. It's un-African, it's unethical, it's ungodly. Go to the Bible and the Quran. We are Muslims, and we believe in the Almighty Allah and what he says. Whatever Allah says is haram, we will make sure it's haram to the letter. I don't care what they feel about me. I didn't introduce the death penalty here. I found it here. And the British brought the death penalty to the Gambia. Before colonialism, there was no death penalty in Africa. Don't you know that? Go to history. But it's also said now, that... Now who? It is also said, uh -huh. Mr. President, yeah. that it was the colonials who brought in the laws against homosexuality into Africa and Africans have maintained and kept those laws. So to be truly African would to be to remove those laws forbidding homosexuality and to remove the death are penalty. You, are you attributing that homosexuality is African? There are some Africans who say so. Uh, yeah. yeah. Now, in, in the slave trade, doesn't Africans or get captured people in the bush? So those, those are the same type of Africans that we still have that they use against us. So I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, but homosexuality is un-African. And I, let me also make it very clear. Even if the whole world accept it, I, I, Jame, will not accept it in the Gambia. They, let them go and tell me whatever they want to tell. Do I care? I don't. What I care about is how Almighty Allah sees me. I'm a Muslim. If I die, none of them can take me to hell or heaven. But it's the Almighty Allah who will take me to wherever he decides. And homosexuality would never be accepted in this country. They can call me any name. Do I care? I don't. Imagine, Mr. President, if you knew somebody, thought they were talented and they were even related to you, and that person presented themselves as a homosexual, said, I can't help it, it's how I was made, would you still condemn them or would you say, I must be merciful, munificent, beneficent? What would you say? In applying the law, I have no relative. I have sworn to the Holy Quran that I will do my duties without fear or favor, ill will or affection. As you can see, he ain't the kind of player you want to be messing with, right? You seem like he really about that life. Well, anyways, he's been out of the country for about four years and he wants to come back. But let's stop the show again. The people in Gambia said, Jame, if you come back, it's over for you, bro. You might face death, all right? So you might as well stay there. Jame, somebody, it says right to come back but the people don't want him back. I think if he go back, it's not gonna be good. My man, John, man, listen, man. You know, I really, I, I'm really feeling your swag and all that, bro. I don't think you should go back because you know, I'm scary. I would never go back to that, you know what I'm saying? But like I said, more to come on that. If my man goes back to Gambia, I will be watching. Let's go. Now, anybody who's been to the continent, such as myself, now y'all know I'm an African-American. 
First time ever going to Africa, 2017. My adopted home, Kampala, Uganda. And one of the things I realized, man, how safe is this place? You know, only the military you see having guns. You know, there's hardly any shootings at all in the country. Same thing with Kenya, same thing with a lot of countries in the continent, right? And everybody knows that because I'm from America where everybody named Mama got a gun. It's crazy. I mean, like, listen, you cut somebody off and you can just get yourself boom, boom, boom. I mean, it's just like that. I thought all of Africa was safe, you know, like Tanzania, Uganda, when it comes to stuff like that. But apparently Ethiopia is facing a gun control problem. Now, there was some ethnic violence that happened, you know, not too long ago where a lot of people was basically dealing with the handgun situation. People was just getting shot and killed and things like that. But not to fear, Prime Minister Ahmed is here. Now last April, Prime Minister Ahmed said there was over 21 machine guns and over 33,000 personal guns found by government officials. I mean, these are the guns that are going around in the Central Horn, I mean in the Horn of Africa, especially in Ethiopia. So what are we going to do about that? Well now the new laws are going to be stipulating that there will be a limit on how many guns that one can have and also they're going to limit the sales from one person to the next. So let's say for example if I own a gun in the previous regime it would be much easier for me to just sell it but not anymore. If I own a gun I have to go through certain situations to be able to sell that gun. If not I'm facing 20 years in prison. Oh Stop my yourself. God. I think this is a great step in the right direction. Ethiopia is on the come up. I've been to the airport. Um, they're really building right now, doing a lot of great things with the infrastructure. The, the, this country is really one of the most uh, underrated in Africa with so much potential. Shout out to all the coffee beans and stuff there, right? So we want to make the continent safe. Ethiopia is on the right path because I hate to say it, you don't want to become little America in Africa. So the new regime is doing something great with limiting these gun laws to make other people safe, especially in places where ethnic tensions are pretty high. So shout out to Prime Minister Med. So we're going from Ethiopia all the way to Somalia with it. Well, kind of, sort of. Demon, actually, let's change that flight. We go on to Somalia, all the way to the UK with it. That's right. Now, I know we're talking about Africa. Why are we talking about the United Kingdom? That is a great question. Jeez, you're smart. There are a lot of Somalians that are in the United Kingdom. In fact, there are a lot of Somalians also in Norway, a lot of Somalians in the United States, a lot of Somalians like a lot of places. I even met a lot of them in Uganda. Shout out to Somalia, right? Just a lot of beautiful people there. Well, anyways, our brothers and sisters that are Somalians living in the United Kingdom are being targeted inaccurately by the British government. Why is that? Because the British government feels that young women who are Somalian are going to experience some sort of female genitalia mutilation. Let me let me explain what I'm saying, all right? There is a family that's in the UK that told their family, okay, because you know, people go there to the UK for a better life, make some money, but they were gonna move back to Somalia for a while, and you know, this wife and his kids are gonna go back. Well, not quite, because when the United Kingdom found out about that, they came and arrested him and his wife. Why? Oh no, were you gonna take your wife and kids and you're gonna go back to Somaliland and do ge female genitalia mutilation? Now, let me just say this. This is where stereotyping comes into play, all right? And we gotta really understand this as black people, no matter what, if you're African American, where you're African, when you come into the West, you don't own your children anymore like you do in Africa. They own your children. Okay, once you step foot on the UK soil and you make that trade and you come to United States soil, they own your children. You don't. 
And if they believe that this is what you do because they heard about it or they stereotyping it, then that's what they're going to act on. And a lot of people that are coming from these countries that are from Africa are being heavily criticized and heavily, you know, stigmatized with this. And people are going to jail and the Somalians are not really feeling that. We just got to understand this. This is why it's important for the, the issues in Somaliland to be resolved so that the people can go back home. I met a lot of refugees living in Uganda that are Somalians and they love their country, wish they can go back. Well, this is the this is unfortunately the, the, the issues that one has when you go to different countries because they don't really understand your culture or don't really understand where you're going from or coming from. And this it, it is a sad situation, but hopefully we can get that rectified in the UK. Stop mistreating our brothers and sisters in Somaliland. You know what I'm saying? Um, the great people, beautiful people. I got a place from Somalia. You know what I'm saying? Shout out Yasmin. I met when I was in Uganda. So again, stop mistreating our folks out there. You know what I'm saying? Well, that is my time, family. I got to get up out of here. But listen, our second installment of King Ghana News, you will be seeing the whole crew here on the continent. And basically this channel, we bring everybody together. I'm African American, you know, the, the Ugandan crew, you know, we're gonna have people from Nigeria, everybody representing the black diaspora here to give them one voice, many different views and opinions, bringing black people together, which is the most important thing that we can ever try to do on this channel is bring all blacks together bring African Americans together, bring Kenyans together, bring Ugandans together. Let's understand one another and have the conversation and let's all work together to build a better black community in America, build a better black community in Africa. When we can do that, we can all help each other do something real great. My name is O'Shea Duke Jackson. That's my time for today. And remember, King Ganda forever. I'm out.